<laughs> All right, so if you're sitting with your export panel inside of Lightroom open right now and you're wondering what everything is, that's what I'm gonna be breaking down in this video. So I'm gonna give you three things. I'm gonna give you an explanation for what each of these things mean while you're exporting your photos, a couple of details that you're gonna to wanna to know if you want the highest possible JPEG quality for your images, and number three, how you can do this faster in the future. So stick around, I'm gonna share my screen with you now, and I'm gonna break down the Lightroom Classic Export Panel. Now, I just took some images of my sister-in-law for some headshots that she needed the other day, and so I'm gonna use these as an example for exporting. So I have this image highlighted. If you wanna export all of them, you can just do Command A, and that's automatically going to highlight everything in this collection. Um, but for today's example, I just wanna have one image. So you have a couple of ways that you can export. You can come down here and click this Export button here at the bottom if you're in the Library module but you can also navigate to the top and go to file and then come down here to export. So once you're in the export panel, this is what we're gonna be talking about for the most of this video. Let's just start at the top. First, you're gonna decide where you want this image to go after you've saved it. And so I just have it set to go to my desktop. You could go anywhere. You could have it go to an external hard drive if you're saving all of your images for a client on an external hard drive, something like that. So I like it to go into a folder. I'm just naming this Lisa's Headshot. So name it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go down to file name. So I'm going to rename my files and I'm going to use something custom so that I can find this and I can easily search for it in the future. So a good tip is to make sure that you do this step. I know I get a little excited sometimes and I just quickly export images without making these changes and then I have no idea what they're named. So put the year, put what it is, help yourself find this in the future. And then having the extensions be lowercase here, you can do uppercase, you can change that here just depending on what you like for your photos. If you wanna change this to something very specific for your business, like let's say you do the year, the month, the event, and your client's name, you can change that and save it as an export saved setting. We're not exporting a video, so we can skip over that. And then for your file settings, this is important. We're going to be exporting for JPEG. We're gonna keep that quality all the way up to 100. Make sure that you do not limit the file size if you want your image to be the biggest, most beautiful file that you can possibly get. Now, if you do wanna get a very specific sized image, especially a very specific size file, that's exactly where you would do it. Color space is sRGB, which is gonna be great for print. It's also gonna look great on screens. And then when we come down to the image size, if you want the highest possible quality of your image, like you want people to be able to print these photos, you want everything to look great, you're gonna to wanna to go and resize this to 300 pixels per inch for print. And then this is also gonna make sure that you don't resize to fit right here for the short edge. So this is going to make sure that your image doesn't get restricted or hold, you know, pulled down to size and that you get as big as it possibly can be. Now, if you are going to resize, let's say for social media, and you wanna do maybe 1080 on your short edge, I would change the resolution to 100 because if I'm doing it for social media, I'm not gonna be printing this image. You are not gonna see the difference. Resolution around 100 is like kind of a sweet spot that I've found where you cannot see the difference if it's just on screens. If you go to print it, of course, then it basically becomes DPI. And if you only have 100 DPI dots per inch, all the detail, I guess, is gonna get lost because you do not have the resolution set at 300. So again, high resolution image, you want this to be at 300. And then output sharpening. I don't do any of these sharpening settings because I like the image to be true to how I edited that image inside of Lightroom. Um, and then your metadata is just what image is or what file information is attached to the image. So you can check these based on what you want the image to contain after it's exported from um, Lightroom. Watermark is really cool. If you want to add a watermark to all of your images at once, maybe you're sending a proofing gallery to someone or you want your credit to be on that image, you can go and edit your watermarks here and create a custom watermark for yourself or your business or your brand. And this is exactly where you would add that to your image. Now, it's gonna ask you one more thing, post-processing. Basically, what do you want to happen after this exits from Lightroom? One thing you could do is have this open in another application. So a lot of times people will grab an image, do everything that they can in Lightroom, and then they'll have it automatically open inside of Photoshop or wherever you're gonna do the next step. And that's where you would choose that here. So I'm gonna have it do nothing. And then one thing I wanted to point out to you that's gonna make this so much faster for you in the future is just click this little add button 
and you can make a preset for your export. So you might have this as like your like high res, you know, 2022. And you keep this and that way every time you come to this export panel, you don't have to go through all of these steps. You know you just want high res to be there. You could also do one of these for social media. So let's say you do we want to resize for social media. You don't want this massive file size and you do want it to have good quality, but you want to make sure that it's resized to social media. So you're going to go to your short edge you're going to make sure that the pixels make sense for something like social media so you might do like 1080 on your short edge and then this is what you would save for your social media preset making it so much faster every time you have to do this in the future okay so when you're done you just go ahead you click export you're going to see at the top left corner you're going to see Lightroom is working on it it's exporting it and then it's going to tell you that it's finished I'm going to go ahead and just go to my desktop really really quickly here so here on my desktop you'll see Lisa's headshots are here double click I see the image is named exactly what I named it it opens up and it looks nice and crisp all right so this has been export settings inside of Lightroom Classic Explained I'm your host Joy Michelle I make videos here on my YouTube channel all about growing your creative business and going after the life you want if you're a photographer and you're looking to gain more skills in Lightroom and business and all the things that go into running a photography business I want to invite you to join my Facebook group it's called Photo Boss with Joy Michelle it has nearly 10,000 members from around the world and it's a really cool place to just connect with other photographers which can sometimes be a little bit of a lonely endeavor if you're running your own business or side hustle so this is a fun place to talk to people who probably have a lot in common with you so anyway thank you so much for watching if you liked this video hit the thumbs up button and be sure to hit subscribe because I have a couple new Lightroom videos coming your way in the next couple of weeks here and I don't want you to miss out on them. Say comments and subscribe. Bye.